Hello. Welcome back to the channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, don't do unboxings, but we generally like to talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about three miniature games. We're going to be talking about three oink games. And in these games, you'll be doing various shit like you do in most board games that will eventually, hopefully, allow you to win the game. So in this video, we're going to be giving you a very brief overview of the rules. We'll be telling you what we do like don't like then we'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not these three oink games are worth your time and bother today and in the future so remember if you're new here please consider subscribing to this channel hit the like button and all that youtube bullshit see you after this bollocks so how'd you play these three oink games so the first game that we are going to talk about, which one are we going to talk about, is Rafter 5. This is a very, very tiny dexterity game. Each player is going to get a number of treasure chests. You're going to get a place to put some treasure chests. You're going to turn the box upside down and you're going to put five rafters on top of the box, yeah? And you'll spread a load of lumber cards into the sea. On your turn, you will take one of the rafters on the box. You'll take a bit of lumber from the sea and you'll place the lumber, usually pointing out to sea, and you'll put the rafter on the lumber. Then you will take a treasure token and you'll put it on one of the lumber cards, right? You'll continue to to do this until one of you disturbs the structure to the point where it collapses. If your own treasure chests go into the sea, then you will reclaim them. That doesn't matter. If your opponent's treasure chests go into the sea, then you put them on your penalty board. And the first player to fill up their penalty board with other players' treasure chests, they'll be the loser of Raft 5. So what do we like? But Raft 5. I'm only going to give you one pro and con because there's not really much to talk about with these oink games because they're about the size of my brother-in-law's penis. But with Rafter 5, we do like the fact that there is a load of dexterity and there's actually a little bit of skill to this as well because whereas if your treasure chests fall into the sea, it doesn't really matter. You could place your own treasure chests in strategic positions to make it more difficult for the other players, right? Because if you can place them in a way that forces your opponent to collapse a structure, then they are going to take penalty points, yeah? So it's like a sort of reverse victory point mechanism where you're trying to give other players victory points so that they lose yeah and if you mix that with a quite nimble dexterity mechanism then it turns out to be quite a good game yeah so the thing that we don't like about rafter 5 is there's not really anything new here yeah it's just another dexterity game whose party trick is that it comes in a really really small box it's been done before got games like via paletti which is sort of similar but the one that it borrows most heavily from in my opinion is a game called riff raff riff raff does it better it's more impressive with its wooden ship the way it moves around Around, but it is more expensive so i suppose if you're looking for a very cheap and quick dexterity game this isn't too bad is it so the next game we're going to talk about is a game called dro polter i don't know what this translates as it's like something ghost i think i don't know if it's like dr ghost or whatever in this game each player will be given a handful of knick-knack tokens yeah they all have different shapes and sizes and you'll place a load of bells on their end to the side of the board yeah you'll have a bunch of cards with icons corresponding to the knick-knacks that you've been given and one player will turn one of these over and then the idea is to use one hand to drop the tokens that are on the card out of your hand and take the ghost yeah if you drop any other token then you fucked it up if you're the first to grab the ghost you'll be able to take a bell and put it in your hand the thing is if you drop any bells on subsequent turns then you will lose those points yeah once a player's got five bell ends in their hand don't know what movie that comes from do any of you lot of the back know john Long's in it but yeah if you've got five bells in your hand then you will win the game of dro polter so do we like that dro polter so the first thing that we like about this game is so fucking simple, yeah? All you're going to be doing is, is trying to drop different tokens out your hand that are displayed on the card. First one to do this sort of wins, yeah? So it's like a dexterity game with a nice timing mechanism thrown in for good measure. You don't need a PhD in batshit studies to enjoy this game. Just watch out that you don't play it with people with long fingernails because when you do try and grab that ghost and they try to grab it as well, you're probably going to slice your fucking fingers off. So don't be like, but Dro Polter. So the thing that we don't like about this is it is for me personally, it's insanely fucking difficult. I do find it a little bit frustrating. Yeah, where I've got massive fuck off sausage fingers and unwieldy cup like hands. It's very, very difficult for me to successfully eliminate the knickknack that I don't want. This game's sort of geared towards people with dainty little fingers, people that are slight or very young children. Yeah, because my kids always seem to kick my ass when we're playing this game. Obviously, it's nothing new. It's like, uh, is it Jax or something? You know, that game where you have to bounce a ball and grab those 
horrible things if you stood on it in bare feet you'd end up in fucking a and e but it's like an inverted version of that yeah it's a novel idea and it works really well so next game we're going to talk about is a fake artist goes to new york yeah this is a drawing game yeah one player is going to have to be a moderator and what they'll do they'll take the roll cards they'll scribble an x on one of the roll cards and they will shuffle them up and they'll distribute them amongst the players yeah the player with the x is going to be the fake artist the moderator will write a word on everybody else's roll card and then they will give a category if i wrote penis on there then i would say genitalia once everyone's received their roll card the fake artist obviously won't know that everyone else is a penis and start with the first player everyone will draw at least one line on their canvas piece of paper right and when the pen comes off the paper they will stop you keep going around and after two rounds of this you'll have a vote you'll have to try and figure out who the fake artist is if you're successful then the artist win and if they don't then the fake artist will win right do we like but a fake artist goes to new york so the thing that we like about this is it works really well with higher player counts and this is because it adds a lot more confusion into the mix this game plays up to is it 10 fucking players or something stupid like that you can play this with up to 10 players so it's great if you are organizing a roman orgy you can use this as a filler in between those bum sex sessions and it creates all kinds of laughs because everything you do draw doesn't look like a fucking cock so don't be like but a fake artist goes to new york so the thing we don't like about this is that it doesn't last very long. You've only got two rounds and that means you're only going to be able to draw two lines. And the game does tell you that you can't really make it that obvious. Yeah, You want to make it obvious enough so that you don't get accused of being the fake artist, but you don't want to make it too obvious that the fake artist gets to know what the fuck you are doing. So if you're really, really good at drawing cocks, then this probably isn't going to be the game for you. Yeah, Probably better off with like Pictionary Air or something like that. And another thing that we don't like about it is that the stuff that you write on the dry erase markers does rub off really quickly on several occasions the fake artist x has been removed completely even when they haven't really been touching their little roll card yeah so that's a component issue with this one i don't really think there's any other way around it. and obviously if you don't like sitting there being a moderator then it's not gonna be a game for you but it does play pretty quickly but then that's a bit of a bastard as well yeah but to summarize are these three oink games worth your time and bother today and in the future so we're going to say, yes, we enjoyed all of these Oink games quite a bit. Each of them satisfies a different need for a different occasion. It all depends on the type of person that you're playing games with. People that don't like Lion obviously aren't going to be that enthused with a fake artist goes to New York. And don't expect a fucking magnum opus, yeah? These games have not fallen from Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's asshole. But then if you did expect a really strategic, in-depth game from these tiny little boxes, then you'll probably be the second person in the world to successfully have given themselves a blowjob after me so there you go those are three oink games remember if you are newer please consider subscribing to this channel hit the like button and all that youtube bullshit see you next time